Hello good people. Thanks for coming back to this channel. Today, we'll talk interesting facts about the Earth. Let's get started. Our home planet, the Earth. That gleaming blue sphere that has enthralled humans since they first set foot on its surface, why shouldn't it fascinate us? It is not only our home and the beginning of life as we know it, but it is also the only planet we know of where life thrives. And we've learned a lot about Earth over the last few centuries, which has only added to our curiosity with it. You've spent your entire life on planet Earth, but how much do you truly know about the Earth beneath your feet? So, here are some fun facts about our motherland, the Earth. Number 1. Earth is billions of years old. Researchers determine the Earth's age by dating the planet's oldest rocks as well as meteorites discovered on the surface. In other words, meteorites and Earth formed at the same time, when the solar system was forming. What did they discover? According to the National Center for Science Education, the Earth is 4.54 billion years old. Number 2. Earth is moving. You may appear to be standing motionless, yet you're actually moving. Quickly. According to space.com, depending on where you are on the planet, you may be spinning at slightly over 1,000 miles per hour. People who live on the equator move the fastest, whereas those who live at the North or South Poles are perfectly motionless. Imagine spinning a basketball on your finger. A random spot on the equator of the ball has a longer distance to go in a single spin than a point near your finger. As a result, the equator's point is moving faster. Number 3. Uneven gravity. Our planet's mass is spread unevenly since it isn't a perfect sphere. An unbalanced mass equals unbalanced gravity. In Canada's Hudson Bay, there is a mystery gravitational anomaly. The gravity in this location is lower than in other areas, according to a 2007 research, and now melted glaciers are to cause. The ice that once cloaked the area during the last ice age has long since melted, but the Earth hasn't entirely snapped back from the burden. Since gravity over an area is proportional to the mass atop that region, and the glacier's imprint pushed aside some of the Earth's mass, gravity is a bit less strong in the ice sheet's imprint. Number 4. Rocks can walk on Earth, at least they do at the pancake flat lake bed called Racetrack Playa in Death Valley. There, a perfect storm can move rocks sometimes weighing tens or hundreds of pounds. Most likely, ice encrusted rocks get inundated by meltwater from the hills above the playa, according to NASA researchers. When everything's nice and slick, a stiff breeze kicks up and moves the rock. Number 5. The Earth's atmosphere is thickest during the first 50 kilometers or so from the surface, but it extends out to roughly 10,000 kilometers into space. The troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere are the five primary layers that make up the atmosphere. The higher one goes into the atmosphere and the further one is from the surface, the lower the air pressure and density. The bulk of the Earth's atmosphere is down near the Earth itself. In fact, 75% of the Earth's atmosphere is contained within the first 11 kilometers above the planet's surface. However, the outermost layer, the exosphere, is the largest, extending from the exobase, located at the top of the thermosphere at an altitude of about 700 kilometers above sea level, to about 10,000 kilometers, 6,200 miles. The exosphere merges with the emptiness of outer space, where there is no atmosphere. The exosphere is mostly made up of hydrogen, helium, and a few heavier molecules including nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, all of which have extremely low densities. Because the atoms and molecules are so widely apart, the exosphere no longer acts like a gas, and particles escape into space on a regular basis. These free-moving particles have ballistic trajectories and can travel through the magnetosphere or into the solar wind. Number 6. The Earth doesn't need 24 hours, it actually takes 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds for the Earth to rotate once completely on its axis, which astronomers refer to as a sidereal day. Now wait a second, doesn't that mean that a day is 4 minutes shorter than we think it is? You'd think that this time would add up, day by day, and within a few months, day would be night, and night would be day. But remember that the Earth orbits around the Sun, every day, the sun moves compared to the background stars by about one degree about the size of the moon in the sky. And so, if you add up that little motion from the sun that we see because the earth is orbiting around it, as well as the rotation on its axis, you get a total of 24 hours. This is what is known as a solar day, which, contrary to a sidereal day, is the amount of time it takes the sun to return to the same place in the sky. Knowing the difference between the two is to know the difference between how long it takes the stars to show up in the same spot in the sky, and the it takes for the sun to rise and set once. 
Number 7. As you're probably aware, Earth has one moon. AKA, the moon. Plenty is known about this body and we have written many articles about it, so we won't go into much detail there. But did you know there are two additional asteroids locked into a co-orbital orbits with Earth? They're called 3753 Crutnay and 2002 AA29, which are part of a larger population of asteroids known as near-Earth objects, NEOs. The asteroid known as 3753 Crutonay measures 5 kilometers across, and is sometimes called, Earth's second moon. It doesn't actually orbit the Earth, but has a synchronized orbit with our home planet. It also has an orbit that makes it look like it's following the Earth in orbit, but it's actually following its own, distinct path around the Sun. Meanwhile, 2002 AA29 is only 60 meters across and makes a horseshoe orbit around the Earth that brings it close to the planet every 95 years, in about 600 years, it will appear to circle Earth in a quasi-satellite orbit. Scientists have suggested that it might make a good target for a space exploration mission. That's all the video today. Thanks for watching.